All right, guys, it seems uh, the day is here. I have these, uh, these are all the seals for every single cylinder, supposedly. And supposedly, this is about as good as you can get, or I ain't supposedly. I mean, these guys advertise that they're better than the other dudes, so they better be. Saw this dude put these in his SL74 with like 16 or 30,000 miles recently, so. If he's putting them in his car, they must be halfway decent. Before I even started on this, here's a cylinder from the front front two blocks. I took I took one apart because I wanted to be able I wanted to know like if I had the ability to even take these things apart because these things are way more difficult than you could imagine to take apart. Um, so I guess we'll just get right into it. This is one of the the seals can you see how funk that thing is this is why the things go bad that's a seal supposedly are you even looking and like this is right there and there and so yeah now here's the problem that i was having i was using originally these uh pittsburgh uh made in taiwan type thing with jangs where are these made okay well these, I think, are made in Taiwan or something like that. These are made in India. Frig India, you guys suck, okay? Um, to start off, to take these things apart, you're supposed to take um, like a 10 and a 7 and just just turn it, turn it out, you know, just unscrew it. Okay, here's the problem. These things don't have a long enough uh, reach on them, and I don't know if you can tell, but like this seven is all you have to take this whole thing out and it's like tapered like out i don't know if you can tell but like after trying it it's it's bowed out so this thing isn't isn't getting a good grip so i had to actually go to the store and buy a seven that was made in like america or something wherever husky's made you know it's probably made in india or taiwan too and i couldn't even use the eight I couldn't even use the eight on this thing, because or the 10, because now the 10 as well, I don't know if it's really that bowed out, but it's, uh, I don't know. But so I ended up using just a small, because it has to be able to get in between there. I just ended up using a uh, adjustable 10. And what I did was put this thing on. I stood on this, stood on that, and then use the seven with a bar that was like this long to unscrew it. So I might show that because some people explain it as like, oh, you, like they literally show just a wrench and this, but like, unless you have this in a vise or like you're standing on it, you can't get it off. And the problem as well is you can't scratch this thing. Like on this one, I don't know if I've already messed it up too much. See how it's a little, uh, fractured on the edge like i hope i can still slide the seal it would actually be this way i hope i can still slide the seal over it because i mean just that little bit right there on the end i could ruin the seal but i didn't know what i was doing and i was also using inferior equipment which was i mean for ten dollars this is a good deal these things were good for most stuff especially the the end ones but once you do something intricate like this, you just get frigged. So I'm gonna show undoing one. Actually, I wanna put one of these back together first and then I'll show you guys putting this, uh, taking this off because I don't wanna get these two confused. And that's another thing about working on cars. What's his name? There's another Kevin on YouTube who does uh, old starts and revised or something. And he just said in one of his videos as well, which is a good idea. You do one side at a time because then you have the other side to look at and you don't get anything confused. So this thing as well is a whole nother story. I'll need to show you that. People are just like, oh, just take it off. What? Like this is actually really hard. And this video is probably gonna be way too long, but it is what it is. All right, I was kind of freaking out, like which way do you put these seals in? But you really can only put it in one way. This is the rubber ring that goes around there. That's the only one it can be. It just is like plastic at this point. So you gotta, I don't want to be taking out like the plastic part because fuck. But so also on these kits, 
I was like, man, how am I gonna know which one's which? I can tell this one are the main lifts and all of them just look the same, but 1672, 1672, so that's the that. All right, so guys, wow, that was so difficult. I actually uh, totally ripped my nail in half and almost cut my finger off with a dull screwdriver. But uh, good thing I didn't get that on video because you guys wouldn't want to see that anyways. But we have a cylinder rebuilt. Um, yeah, uh, I you have to vice this thing down and use two screwdrivers. A lot of people make it look really easy, but it's actually really hard. But before this thing was like really sloppy and you could feel the slop. Now it's like super tight. I think. Actually, I think what I did to rip my nail in half was I had like, I was holding this with one hand and then like this with my right hand and I squoze my nail in half, ripped it in half with this thing. Goodness gracious. Good thing I'm not like a third year old car and I can uh, regenerate my health, but wow. Okay. Okay, and yeah, also uh, don't forget uh, safe glasses when you're mess with the rings and stuff because you know your finger's okay but like if that were to happen to your eye wouldn't be really worth it see that slop and then we got the rebuilt one it doesn't even doesn't even slide back up on its own this one can you tell the difference let's take this one apart and i'll show you everything that's going on um, this is kind of the way I did it. Um, pulled it down with my foot. This thing is, uh, held down by gravity or being pushed down. I hold the wrench down so it doesn't round the friggin' thing. And hopefully, oh, wow, that one worked way easier than the other one. Yeah, that's, that's the way you do it. All right, so there's absolutely no way I could ever get this on video because my hands are moving all over and stuff. This is the second one. Um, these rings are the hardest part and that's probably why they do it. So not everyone can do it. Really what you wanna do is if you're looking at the cylinder, you wanna hold it with one hand. You wanna be wearing eye protection because like this thing will shoot to the friggin' moon and hopefully you'll be able to find it. I'd almost recommend this doing indoors because your hands just get all friggin' sweaty and you can't grip anything and you constantly need to wipe your hands off and if your fingers ripped off it's even harder. But so you want to take your really small uh, screwdriver that's already friggin' uh, chiseled because you've been doing this so much. It needs to be a really fine point screwdriver. If this thing is sitting in there you want to put your screwdriver above with like the point because i'm a lot i've lost a point above above the thing push down really hard with the corner once you see it pulled out you want to push the whole edge of the screwdriver like behind it to pry it and have your thumb almost like above it so it doesn't launch and you just want to like pull it up and it should just pop up like a little bit if you do it right but yeah, and then for the moment of truth, let's put the camera up and see what the cylinder looks like inside. All right, so if you guys are looking, you should just be able to go like this and just friggin' pop it out. Inside looks uh, not too dirty. But here's the moment of truth. Oh yeah, and this is the better one. Oh man. This is the better one. So you should just be able to go like that. And then pop this ring out. This one actually still has some consistency of being halfway decent, but see how this is a green one? and it's black on the edge because it's so friggin' chiseled. It has, um, around the inside, if you're even looking, it's not even connected anymore. Like this thing goes like this to push the hydraulic fluid. This inside bit isn't even connected anymore. It's just 
completely degraded. But on this one as well, on this one as well, you can see this ring right here is almost still good. Some people that rebuild these, they just go to the store, buy some um, or O-rings, big ones, thick ones, stick the O-rings in there. Th this kit should last a long time. They say like a decade or more. And you know, that'd be cool with me. But same on this. You just stick the corner in there. Try not to frig it up too much. Just stick it on the edge. Silver or clear thing goes on the outside. This one as well. Still has some consistency, but I have the new one, so why put it on? This is what's uh, keeping the hydraulic oil in the system. Yeah, it's garbage. Make sure uh, you get all the junk and gunk out, because, you know, see how it can only go in one way? If you try and put it in this way, it won't go in this way. The way it's supposed to go, it just pops right in. This is the new seal. Make sure the white's on the outside, popped right in, easy enough. When you put this back in, black thing's at the bottom, basically just stick it in. And it's as easy as sticking it back in. 10 millimeter right here. Got my block of wood. You really gotta be thinking with your dipstick when you're doing this. So now this is held in, and with a vise it'll probably be easier. But I don't have a vise. Basically, I hold this thing in like this and then just give it everything, you know? Do something like, please God help. Wow, that was much easier than last time. I can't believe I got that on video also. As you can see, the ring is in and it's much harder to move because the seal's better. I'm not gonna move it a whole bunch without lubrication in there because I just wiped off all the hydraulic fluid. Okay, well, here it is. I got that sensor out. It's just sitting right there plugged in. It should just rest right down and uh, not get into any problem. Um, I think this is to tell these when to lock. Um, so all the cylinders should still leak. Um, they didn't leak though as bad as the front one. So what's gonna happen now is since those are sealed, it's gonna jump the line to the next ones that are the next uh, as unsealed. So it's gonna be squirting under here and under there. So I should probably move the car out or put something underneath it. I'll probably put some cardboard underneath it right here and over there and we'll see what happens. I'm going to set the camera up, try and put it like right here. I'm just going to run the top. We're going to see what happens. That was the first time the top's ever done that on its own without uh, drenching me. In. All right, so just put the roll bar up for the first time. It actually worked totally perfect, kind of cool. Uh, gonna clean this up a little bit, but to get these pieces off to get to the main lift cylinders, top has to be down, this bar has to be up. Actually looks to be in pretty good condition. Looks kind of cool. I guess when it fully rolls over, it goes up more. I don't know though. Okay, so there's gonna be Philip, Philip, and Phillips. And then I think you can just pop this thing off and then start getting to the back carpet. 
Okay, so I used one of these sockets because uh, the Phillips that are on this side, you can literally only get two with it. There's only even a barely little room to get the socket in there. But once you have it broke loose, you can just turn it with this and don't need to use that. And over here, you can use a regular screwdriver to get that one out. There's also like this retainer clip thing for this door molding trim. I want to say after this, you can just pull this thing out. Okay, so then supposedly there's another screw right here. Yeah, there's a Phillips right here and over there. I'll save this button to glue back on. All right, so taking those things out I was actually a bitch and I was just gonna unplug these things, but gotta remember that when looking at it, this uh, one orange lined wire goes to the right and I guess this, uh, you gotta take this uh, weather stripping off that's right there, just slides right off, doesn't really have glue on it or anything. There's a bunch of tabs like at the base and right here. I'm not sure if that's actually a tab or if that's just over that. I guess it's not a tab. So really there's only two tabs on the bottom. They like pop in and then the top is like needs to go up. So it's just really fudged in there pretty good. Okay, on this side, the only difference is there's the defroster thing. And basically you just like pull, you just, you can just kind of like push the thing. This thing's like a, a spring and you just push it and you can slide the thing out. Same thing, pull up, push out type deal. This side, orange wires on the right. This thing's on the left. Bada bing, bada bing. Okay, so once you get that out, uh, there's a subwoofer box in here. I'm gonna vacuum this out, but this is all the, the funky stuff. I guess I'm not gonna peel it out because it'll just continue to muffle. That stuff is like glue and sound absorber type stuff. It holds down the um, that subwoofer if you have the bows. But so there's a 10 millimeter here and then two 10s down here. I need to vacuum this out so I'll be able to put it back in without a problem. So there's a 10 here, 10 here, 10 here. Sub situated, oh, it's heavy, like this in the car. So this is the back, this is the upper 10. Then there's a lower 10 down here, a lower 10 down in here. And what I did, which was really kind of scary, is this thing's like glued down. So I took a hammer and put the claw grip down in here. We'll put like some piece of metal behind it so it doesn't just tear in the plastic. So piece of metal, then the claw hammer. And I just pulled up and it did a big pop. And I was like, oh fuck, like things cracked and broken, but it wasn't, it just is popping up the glue. And then I, was able to just pull from this side because it was loose, put it up on this side, popped right out. All right, so then we got this, uh, the main bolt. I'm on it with the ratchet right now. I've already broken it loose. It was kind of tight. Still is really tight for, uh, holding in the main lift cylinder. All right, so here it is. All right, so on the passenger side, there's a false bottom thing with Jang. Mine was all cracked and broken. There's this little plastic 10 mil over here. And then same thing on this side, there's gonna be that big bolt. But so this is what the false bottom is. I'm gonna re-glue all this so at least it's all intact. It's brittle because it's old, it was already broken. All right, so not sure why I didn't think of this earlier and tape these things up or get something to strap these things up because these are so friggin' annoying, but uh, I got like a swivel on this now, if you can see, and I moved these wires, pulled them like up like this and went like underneath. I can already tell this is gonna be hard to put back in, but as well on this side, this one's a uh, mega tight and needs to be two hands. Okay, so this bolt as well is just as tight as the other bolt. And these are also kind of like airbags, I think. So like when you get in an accident, this thing's shooting up and trying to save you from getting uh, crunched. But... All right, so now we got the top up. 
Um, where are we? Right here. So, this thing, you just like jam something in there. Actually, first, you want to jam something up here, turn it a little bit, and then. Uh, oh. So now you should be able to somehow fin jangle the thing out, but. Um, yeah, you need to take like these things off as well, I think. And then it should walk right out. Here's where the bolt slides through, actually. Now we got to see what was going on. All right, so also, pin would be, uh, or cylinder thing would be up here, and would be up here. You need to push it down all the way to get all the fluid out. So you take that clip off, take that clip off up there, cut that zip tie boot. I guess when we put it back in, we put it back through there and put another zip tie on the thing. But then the thing should just come right out. All right, so here we have one of the main lift cylinders. I thought you could just slide it up out, but you need to push up as far as you can go and you need to pull this boot down and slide it out over the boot. Okay, so to help me remember as well, this side is, the uh, driver's side is 94W48 it looks like, but the big thing is it has 94. So driver's side on my car, 94. We go around to the passenger side. Passenger side is 95 WO2. So I'm just gonna need to remember. All right, so helpful tip on these things. Do not then think it's a good idea to just point this in a random direction and pull out the cylinder like I did. I literally was holding it right here. And as you can see by the shooting, it actually went all the way up and hit the roof of the garage, so. Yeah, that was kind of funny. I went around the corner and like where there's no grass and just stones. I open and close, open and close the cylinder a couple times to clear out what's in there. So then when I'm working on it, it's not leaking all over me. But you know, it's not going down the drain. It's just going to absorb into the dirt and shit and dissipate. It'll be fine. All right, note to future humans during this, wear eye protection, aim the thing away from you. And I'd suggest doing it in, in a confined space. Like, I don't know, your bathroom or something. Cause this thing launches, it, uh, I don't think that was it. It might've been it. Might've shot at the car right there and d did that. I don't even know. But, um, yeah, that thing launched and I was like, dang, dang, where'd it land? And then it landed right there. So, all right, let's see what lies behind door number friggin' one. Almost just lost the camera. So here's the problem is there's the seal inside of this thing. So we actually, let's see if this works. I'm gonna heat the shit out of it. Okay. Uh, and then, and then see if I can turn it off. All right, scratch that, I ain't buying no vice. I heated this thing up like point blank range for two or three minutes straight until it was so hot that it was like, Heat, it was heating up these thing, the vice grips, and the vice grips are on cardboard. But so man, the thing's just covered in Loctite or something. Some people put a wrench around it. I just stuck a screwdriver around it and just cranked on it. But another trick is these Milwaukee uh, vice grips, they got this uh, thing in here and you can clamp it down on whatever you want to hold it. Stick a big screwdriver or something in that thing spin it just as tight as humanly possible as tight as you can go then you're almost at where it should be all right so this is a live look we're gonna take a look at this one this one uh has been cooling so we're gonna set this down so we don't scratch it in here is the the doohickey that we're working with now the seal is probably more deteriorated because I heated it up to a thousand bajillion degrees, but I mean, clearly it wasn't working good anyways because it was leaking. And I actually forget, this is the passenger one, I think. And I think this seal is working better than the driver's one, but they're all identical. Let's see how we put this one in. I wanna say it has to go like this because if it matches the others, it kinda has to go like that. I can already tell this one's gonna be hard to put in. Okay, well, I'm actually surprised uh, that went in. Uh, 
I put it with the U facing down this way because I figure if it's pushing up, it needs that that U to be able to push the the fluid into the cylinder and not go past it because it needs less pressure to go back down, you know? All right, so then in the main lift part, we got the, the big O-ring. It seems as though I have the cylinder rebuilt. Now, all I can say is when you're putting on, when you're putting on the seals that go inside of this thing, when you're putting on the seals that go inside of this thing, I'll have to clean this up, like this is terrible. When you're putting on the seal inside of this thing, you gotta push it in from the top, push it in from the bottom, you have too much wall to work with. You just gotta push it in from the top, hold it in with your finger on the bottom, like hold it into the groove, one edge, and you just gotta fucking push it. Just push as hard as you can. It'll pop in there eventually. I'm gonna try and get it on video. This time though, for this side. Push it in a little bit, try and hold it in with your finger. I'm gonna use my middle finger because it's stronger than my broken nail pointer. And just gonna push it really hard. Don't worry about kinking this seal a little bit. Because it needs to go in some way. And like that, it just popped into place. You heard it click. All right, for some reason, the end of this shaft was a little corroded. I used a little steel wool. Try and cleaned it up a little bit. Making sure it's all clean before it goes back together. This is another clean cloth. All right, so let's try and get this on video as well. This... I kind of just uh, pop the cylinder down all the way. You'd think that you could just push it down with the cylinder top, but that doesn't really work well. You just hold it kind of like this. I'm certain there's probably a better way to do it, but this is what I figure out how to do. And just... You'll hear it bottom out. I give it a couple extra taps. I'm gonna do it on this side. Give it a couple extra taps. It's pretty good down. This gets kind of interesting. I'm gonna try and get this as well on video. All I did on the other one was just jam it down. It was actually easier than the smaller one, so kind of, sort of, but. Now this gets dangerous. Like I said before, you need to work safety glasses you just want to try and get it going around the edge oh there it goes boom bada bing bada bing three boat all right so guys i did exactly what you don't want to do jump one of the main lift cylinder bolts into the hole now i just had my magnet went to AutoZone or harbor freight and got this magnet with a coupon for like eight bucks Oh man, guys, I was in here for the long haul. I got a fan out because I was like, I'm gonna die in here sweating to death. I asked God a thousand million times, please, can I just catch this thing? I caught it by the very end, pulled it out. You can tell it was in there because it's covered in hydraulic fluid. That means my frame is uh, really protected from corrosion. I've got the protective corrosion film on everything, but yeah, somehow I lost that whole bolt, and uh, and now this little hole that's the size of like your thumb or something. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. And if you want to get it out, I got a bendy thing, and I reached towards the front of the car because the fender is like right there. So I figured it fell forward, curved it kind of forward, just kept moving around until I could hear a ting, and then just pulled really slow. Pulled it slow until I got the the magnet out of the hole and then grabbed it with the tip of my fingers, pulled it out. Goodness gracious, that added on so much time. All right, so got the bolt in, as you can see down there. Trick is left hand, you wanna hold the bolt really tight. Right hand, I was messed up first time because I was trying to get these padded things in so I, it doesn't make noise or whatever they do. You wanna hold this with your right hand and like kind of like lift it up because it's it doesn't just sit fully down it obviously sits a little up so you want to hold it up a little bit start tightening it with your left hand make sure it has some threads on and then 
yeah, start tightening with your wrench. Okay, I'm not gonna say any of this was easy, but got these clips back on. I had to like bend them back into shape. Don't entirely know why they chose these clips instead of something that was more useful, but. And I already have a zip tie around where the old zip tie went. I have it loose on, so when I'm done, I can just tighten it back up. All right, so after much effort, got all the clips in. I developed a new technique. I got my trusty piece of hammering wood and used it as a fulcrum, put it like right here. Put a screwdriver right here. As you can see, fulcrum action, fulcruming. Put the end of the screwdriver right under there and whammed on the end of the hammer right there and just knocked it into place. All right, so these lock cylinders for the tonneau cover or whatever, um, they're easy to take off. You got two ten, three tens. The normal clips, you just, if you made it this far, you know how to get those off, screwdriver, pry it out, you know, just wedge it out. It's one of the ones like the front lock cylinders where you need to get a wrench around it, it seems, and uh, spin it off or something. All right, so to undo the cylinder to get it out, there's this little clip, you can get it from either side. I just use a screwdriver and stuck it under where like one of those holes is and just pulled it up, pops it out, slide the pin out. This thing then slides out. Problem was, I was like, I don't know how it's gonna slide up so you can get to the uh, the thing so you can spin it off. But I just pushed right here and wham, it just shot down and now you can get to it. Okay guys, you're not gonna believe it. I got out my pry bar and everything. And I realized that uh, this is my seven. This is like as low as I go. And it's like a five or something. So if you had a five or maybe four, I don't even know what it is, but who has wrenches that go that small? I don't right now. But so I just put this thing on. These Milwaukee vice grips are the best. Cause like I said, you can, uh, you can crank on them like this. So I had my foot on it and I was just tightening it like heck. And I was like moving it back and forth. And sure enough, as you can see, it's spinning. So I'm gonna try and just spin this thing off. Boom. Now we can rebuild that cylinder. It's one of the standard, uh, pry the thing off and hope it doesn't fly to the moon. Pray to God you can get it back. All right, guys, I'm gonna listen to my own advice next time. I just got this clip off. At first I was trying a, a box cutter because it was thinner, but then I was like, I need to use this. And you really just gotta jam it in there and I pried the thing off and this thing shot out of the garage and over there and i heard it tinging away it was like ting 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 bouncing away and i found it thank god all right let's see what's behind door number 2000 oh that was first pull oh there's this there's the seal this seal doesn't even look that bad yet but as you can see it's cracking see that crack these ones, these seals never look bad. So when people do it really cheap, they go to the hardware store and they just get seals that fit over, like circular seals that fit over the shaft. But it's, it's on its way out. Yeah, the U is facing, like if my finger is the U, the U is facing that way. So like this is the U, it was like this. See what I'm talking about, the U, how it's like, it's supposed to have like a lip right here. So the fluid like catches and it pushes. It, it pushes and it's gonna be the same for the other side as well. So we got the new seal really tight. Pop that baby in, new ring. Boom, back together. Away she goes. Give it a little bit of spin, put it back on. Oh, don't wanna hurt it. Try and get this whole thing on camera. All right, it's bottomed out. Now you can see we can put the ring on if I could find it. There it is. I'll try and get this on camera also. All right, so this is my patented technique. If you use this, you gotta send me royalties. You stick it in, that's what she said. You better. And then, 
you like hold the end down with one screwdriver and then with the other you just manhandle it into its place oh no did i not get that on video of course i didn't i need a new phone and camera clips on there what i like to do is try and give it a little spin to make sure it's seated all right so so far taking out the uh the i'm gonna call it the tonneau cover i don't think that's the right word i've taken out the back panel now there's gonna be a clip like one two three uh four and there's gonna be like a clip or two here and like here you need to pull, my car doesn't have it, but you need to pull the edges out so you can then get the thing out and you need to slide these things out from behind. You just need to like slide them out. That's all there is. Looks kind of straightforward. There's gonna be a clip here, normal clip there, normal clip there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, like C-clip off and take this whole thing out so I can unscrew it out of the car. All right, so I don't know if I recorded it, but I put in this cylinder without uh, putting in the black spacer at the bottom. I had to take the whole thing out, take the thing out. It was actually really hard. I took the cylinder to a Euro shop, gave somebody 10 bucks, and he showed me he had this pick that wasn't just a pick. It had like a clip at the end. He was able to get the C-clip back out. I was able to put the spacer back in, so. This one's back in, so now all there is is two, two, and then the bow extension cylinder. I don't think I'm gonna mess with that till the end. All right, so on these back lock cylinders, all there is is three tens right here, and then you can slide it out through the, the trunk, unclip the lines once you have it. Okay, so it turns out I can't reach the top 10 right there with the ton of cover or a lift cylinder in the way so there's just one of those c-clips that's on right here pop it up slowly because it'll shoot off for some reason my side right here is corroded but the other side isn't so you just want to slide it off and if it's stuck i just use a screwdriver pried it sideways it came off looks like i almost bent it but it'll be fine and then you want to just push the cylinder down all the way to get all the fluid out now I can reach all those tens and then slide the cylinder or the lock cylinder out. All right, so just to remind anyone else is remembering, the curved one goes on the bottom and the straight one goes on top. But yeah, once you get the clips undone, you can just slide the cylinder out the front. Might want to actually unplug this uh, this clip. That could probably help. Okay, so on these rear lock cylinders, same as usual, there's like a pin right here. You slide the C-clip out. This thing kind of went like this. It's just in the way it slides off. It kind of holds, I think, this thing. But so, I put the lock down with the Mercedes tool. You can put the lock down uh, when it's in or out lock mechanism thing is right there on the other side but then you can just like pull or push the cylinder out i want to say this again is like a five or seven and it's just spun on there with some loctite so you can like knock the loctite off or just start trying to spin it all right so these rear lock or this rear lock cylinder is uh, completely destroyed it like separated in half as i was sliding it out Here's the new uh, cylinder, or here's the new uh, gasket or whatever. Goes in like that, you goes up, because it's going up like that, as usual. Just to explain, on the other side right here, on this, I didn't put on this bottom base. So when I put it back together, it didn't sit right. Don't forget that goes at the bottom. Easy, same thing. Gasket yeah, so goes back in, put it back together, put it back in. On the driver's side, they both seem to be straight ones, which is weird because one's curved on this side. Like I showed 
One's curved and one's straight. But I have it recorded so I'll know which one's which. But on this side, both of them are straight in. Interesting, but it's disconnected now. Same thing as the other side. Okay, so now for the tonneau cover lift cylinders. Should have already slid the thing off on right here. This side was much harder than that side. I took that side off though as well. Back here, you can uh, just, uh, I just stuck a, a pick in the end right here. This clip is on the side right here. Goes sort of like that. I stuck a pick in it, pushed it down all the way, turned it out a little bit, pulled it out. Then you can slide the pin out and you should be able to slide the whole cylinder out. On this though, 35 goes to the top of the lift cylinder, 50 goes to the bottom. I'm gonna tape these two together. 21 goes to the top of the lock, 20 goes to the bottom of the lock. All right, note to self, I'm trying to get this uh, nut off because this one was easier because I could use them against each other, but now there's nothing to eat. I think there's no end to this one. So I just have a cloth on this tighten as hard as possible. This nut is about one, two, three, three threads down. So I'm gonna try and lock it back in that position about. All right, so this is one of the uh, rear tonneau cover lift cylinders. It's actually harder to get to than the others for some reason. I actually went out and got a new set of screwdrivers for it. These Milwaukee's that are like supposedly stronger, way thinner than most of what I have and it gets it done, but on these, there's this plastic sleeve at the bottom and then the uh, the black, I don't know, spacer that I always forget. So taking a look at these, they're cracked. So they're on their way out anyway. It's not as bad as all of them, but pretty bad. All right, so the bow extension cylinder seals are in. 2072, says right on it, match right up. Don't forget, make sure you got everything that's supposed to be on there on there. Bada bing, bada boom, put it back together. Okay, so this cylinder is the second um, tonneau cover lift cylinder. And this one's completely destroyed. It's also a better idea if you slide the new seal, especially on these ones, slide the seal down, like kind of turn it and slide at the same time, because this thing just destroys the seals. Kind of spin it and push it down being gentle, but also getting it down and yeah, same thing. Also these uh, Milwaukee, I think this is a 30 second uh, flathead. This works really good. You just push down really hard, pull. Works much better than uh, my other broken Craftsman, but honestly Craftsman sent me out a new screwdriver. So I'm, I'm not talking junk about Craftsman. All right, so all the locks and the tonneau cover lift seals are out and now they are, all right, yeah, now they're all in. Um, note to self, it might be easier to attach the lines before putting them back in, especially these. And also when you're putting these clips back on, make sure you're like holding like your finger around both sides and pushing it down with like a screwdriver or something. Cause good God, the other side I was putting it on and it was like almost all the way down and then it uh screwdriver slipped and this thing shot up bounced up hit the roof shot everywhere and i was looking all over and yeah the bathroom's getting redone but so i was looking all over and then it's just sitting right here all right so this is the bow extension cylinder in here i actually didn't even know it existed until i realized that there's still one more to rebuild there's a clip down here. You wanna just, oh, are you looking? Are you looking? There's a clip down here. Hold our focus. Come on, phone, you can do it. Okay, well, there's a normal clip on the end right here. And you wanna pop it off with like a, a magnet stick, like right next to it, so you don't lose it. 
And this is also a big problem. Don't break this thing. It's the micro switch that says uh, when it's uh, the top is. You can hear it working. It's just a micro switch. It tells it when it's doing something. I'm gonna take that pin out. Okay, so get the bow extension cylinder out. This is probably not the way you want to do it. I just took a pick, had my magnet next to it and pulled it this way, but it just launched right here and landed right there. So now I got the top one out. I already got the bottom one out. The bottom one. Um, it's usually right here and you pull the pin out and then you can tap it out and it lands in there or i had my magnet also down in there so i caught it as well and you want the you want the top down to get the bottom one out and you want the top up to grab this one the top one but wow this is really dangerous because if you do it wrong you're gonna break the thingamajang so now i'm gonna knock that bolt out that pin out and it's gonna fall into there and hopefully not fall into oblivion and I'll find it, and when I put it back together, it's going to be much harder. But, yeah, so I'm going to knock that pin out, and then I'm going to raise the bow up, and we're going to see if we got it out, the first one out. Man, this one is the most difficult cylinder to get out. All right, so both the bottom and top pin are out. Right now, I'm undoing these three screws that are right here that are really tight. This is a Milwaukee... I guess I just called it a number one. I mean, this thing's an exact size to the screw. I'm undoing it with the, this extended friggin' screwdriver that I'm probably only gonna use once. And then I have my magnet right next to it. Now, worst case scenario, I have it kind of set up where this boot right here is gonna catch anything, hopefully. Now, I already dropped one and it caught it. You don't wanna drop these screws. When I'm unscrewing it, I have my screwdriver off to the side. And then once it's almost out, I just have my my magnet right there next to it, catching it. So I got one one screw left. Okay, so why is this last cylinder so annoying? I don't know. Maybe because it wasn't designed to actually be done by normal people. The clip for the bow extension cylinder sensor is right here. You unplug it. You unplug it. Just drag that clip, and then it goes up with the two hydraulic lines. So you want some, you kind of want to just push the clip up through that tiny little gap and it barely fits, but you can move the wires to the side and get it through. Reverse entry, the thing goes down in between and follows the the hydraulic line. So when you put it back in, you want to follow it down. The This thing also has this stupid thing that I might not even put back on, but probably will. I guess it goes right here. It screws onto the top right there. And I took both pins out. Some people do it different, but then once you have this thing, you need to push it up through and then you like kind of pull the wire and it just like uh, slides off. You want you need to and want to take this thing off. Then it's kind of the same as all the other cylinders. Remember that both the clips, as you can see, are facing towards the outside of the car. That's because with everything going on, I think it'll get totally frogged if you don't put it back the same way. Okay, so now to get the seal out, I just have another vice grip on this thing. A whole bunch of cardboard. Tighten the thing down really tight with the screwdriver. And praying I'm not scratching the thing again. And I used a big whatever thing and spun it off. I'm going to keep this thing on so I don't lose it. A seal in there. And I was going to be like, man, I'm not even going to replace these things because they're so hard to get to. That seal's completely destroyed us, so there's no base in it anymore. So this thing was leaking pretty good. Oh yeah, and to get this thing off, you need something like uh, these, but these things suck. I might actually try and file down the tips on these things. Only the like very tip was in the thing, 
I was scratching the shit out of these things, but I just turned it. And so when I would slip, I kept scratching the metal really good. But see how it's really loose in there? If I file down the nose on these things, these things work pretty good. I got these at Harbor Freight, but man, these things suck. And I bought these just to do this one cylinder. Yeah, so there's that one seal. I'm gonna look up. Man, I need a headlamp that's a rechargeable battery because this thing sucks. So yeah, there's the one seal, it's really small. It turns out there's another seal in there. I'm gonna flop that thing in there and put it back together. Okay, so on these box extension cylinders, unlike most of them, or like most of them actually, you're gonna wanna put the seal down on the thing first. It's not gonna come loose now. But you're gonna wanna put the seal down on this thing first because it's a really tight fit and you don't wanna scratch up going over there. And then just pushing this thing down will pop the seal into this thing, whatever the heck it is. But that's a spacer on this one. And then pull the seal out, put that new one in there. Yeah, I'm gonna put this thing back on while I saw, I never took off the vise cause I'm afraid to. So I'm gonna put this thing back on, then push it back in there. Really, you just want something like pliers or something that you can just push with all your might down so you don't lose grip. And I also had this clamped onto with my bigger vices. I clamped around this whole thing. So I had a uh, good grip and yeah, you just go to town. All right, so this thing's all back together. It's actually easier tightening than it was loosening it. Tightening it as hard as I loosened it. It's flush again. Yeah, this thing shouldn't leak for at least another decade or decade and a half or two or something. I'm fairly certain that either these have been replaced, like the whole cylinders were replaced at one point, or they were never redone. So, who knows? All right, so this is the tricky part. I stuck the pin on the first little notch, like as far as my finger goes, reached around right here, stuck the pin on. You can reach your hand around the roll bar kinda. And with a long skinny arm, you can push it on kinda. I then lifted up the cylinder and with uh, my other hand, push the pin on. With my hand with the phone or camera, push the pin on. Then use some grease, put it on my screwdriver, put the pin on this, or the clip on the screwdriver and set the pin or the, the clip onto place. Then with my other hand, held the, the clip and pushed it down with the screwdriver. I know it's not focusing, but yeah, I did it first try. It seemed harder than it actually was, but I know, uh, doing the the bottom i also had a magnet to try and catch it if it fell but i know doing the bottom pin is going to be more tricky all right so for real these bow cylinders are the most annoying thing ever i put the first pin on top yeah i'm pretty sure i have that all recorded i had when when the roof was up i like curved a um zip tie and stuck it in the bottom pin and then loosely tightened it so it was like holding the thing in place then i reattached the main lift cylinder because i had it undone to get the cylinder the the cylinder out so then when it was down here i cut the uh, the zip tie with some um some cutters and then I had the pin on my magnet and I was pushing the pin in place. And if it didn't go in, I stuck my finger in here and lifted up and moved around the cylinder till I could look in and see that it was as aligned up as I could get. And then while I was still holding the pin with my magnet, cause if I drop the thing down there, game over. But so the whole time I had it connected to a magnet and I pushed it in. Now what I'm gonna do is lift the roof up, hope the pin doesn't fall out. And then if we look in there, which we can't see anything, when the roof's up and then the bow is up, you can see where the, the pin goes. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so here we are. I have my zip tie pulled out that was loosely, see how it was loosely attached? It was loosely attached down there. Now with this bow up, I snuck the zip tie around 
and put the zip tie through there and tightened it so it was held in place. Also, I had this lift cylinder attached when I put the roof down because if you don't, this thing will bump into the cylinder and the roof won't be able to go down all the way and then you won't be able to reach the hole to stick the pin in. So now with the roof up, I'm gonna do the same thing as the other side, the uh, upside, and I'm gonna put some grease on the screwdriver, push it into place, then hold the top of the pin with my finger or fingers so it doesn't launch away. And I'm going to, if you're looking, I'm going to push down with the screwdriver, put the pin on, then the cylinder will be in place. All right, so I knew that would be hard. I had one magnet on that side, one magnet on that side, even though I knew if I dropped it, it would just fall right there. Down here, the drip catch would probably catch it if it fell, but it's clipped on. I'm going to screw the, uh, the sensor on and I'm gonna do the other side. And then after that, we're gonna see if the top works. I'm actually gonna adjust the locks, make sure everything's aligned, manually close it so I know that it's in the right position. Like these locks right here, they're down because I've opened and closed it so many times because this thing's bumped it so many times. I'm gonna have to unlock it, make sure all the locks are up, make sure everything's right. So, yeah. And with the roof like halfway up like this, put that final screw and that clip in. And then all I'm gonna have to do is put this down through that, the slot right here and then plug it back in to, to here. Let's see, yeah, it needs to go down. It needs to go down through that hole. Can't go out through here. Oh, and wow, I'm glad I showed you guys the other side because this side doesn't have the sensor, thank goodness, only the other side has the sensor. So I'm not gonna have to do all the gibberish of trying to do the thing. Remember on this side though, the clips point towards the inside of the car. Cause if they point to the outside, they're gonna get ripped off and you're gonna have hydraulic fluid going everywhere. So I'm gonna bang this out and we're gonna be getting the soft top working again. All right guys, we have every panel still off. I mean, all the trunk panels, all the inside panels and stuff. Just finished up, mega dirty, probably like freaking crazy. I spent so many hours on this this week. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, at least three days on this. But so I'm just gonna start the car up. We're gonna back it out. And I mean, first off, I need to put down this uh, roll bar. So we're gonna uh, just back out and Hopefully the car actually has battery power. I left the doors open for so long. Oh, and we need gas. Put the roll bar down. Okay, that's down. No, the top. I don't understand why the top says it's illogical. It has its thing going off. All right, we're gonna take a pause right here. Okay, so as usual, two of the back latches were stuck down, and now that the seals are done, they're really tight, so it was like uh, interesting to them back, but roll bar is down. Everything's out of the way. Somehow we now have more gas, that's interesting. Ain't nothing to it, but just go for it. Here we go. never check to see if this thing okay so I don't think it's that bad of news um, as you can see here it's totally empty so all right so I just went to Mercedes spent 60 bucks thing takes 1.5 liters so I got two of these which is hydraulic fluid I guess Pentacin is for the 03 and up they told me I don't know but so here's like a max level like that's min, that's max. Are you looking? That's min, that's max. I'm just gonna pour it up to about, I'm actually gonna pour it up almost to max because I know that the lines are gonna be empty. Filter doesn't look dirty. I'm honestly not going to take that fluid out because as you can see, it's not that dirty. 
All right, so I used about that much of that bottle. I might actually return this bottle, or I might just keep it for forever. But we're up to about a little below max. All right, couldn't be more nervous. Light isn't on, so that means the stop top believes it's uh, in the right position. Uh, yeah, couldn't be more nervous. Just had some, a uh, little bit of wine. Should be... Should be as good to go as I could go. All right, soft top, fluid, hydraulic fluid's all in. Let's just see what happens. Wow, okay, it's doing it. No way. Well. Let's see if it's leaking anywhere. No leaks. That's wild. Oh no. It looks like we have a leak right here. Is that actually from? It doesn't leak from there though. Does it? It leaks from right here. I don't know, maybe it was uh, self-adjusting or something. I'm gonna have to take a look. But it used to leak like crazy and now uh, I don't see any leaks. That's wild. Let's put the top back up and see what happens. Let's check the fluid level. Um, I don't know if you can see, but fluid could be topped up just a little bit. All right, I looked over everything, looked at the hydraulic fluid, can't say anything wrong. We're gonna do round two, and this one's gonna be going up. Windows went down. Top launches up. Hide your face, hide your head. Oh. Oh no. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna have to do some more looking. All right, so new test. I think everything's uh, situated as it could be. We're gonna just go for it. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, this thing actually didn't have a clip on it anyway, so that's all good. That's actually the piece right there. You know, these things suck. They just literally just break all the time. Or these things just suck, they break all the time. So this was the problem last time is the roof didn't want to go back up, or it didn't want to latch right here, but we see. Oh. So I just did a full cycle and I backed the car out to see, make sure there was no residual on the ground. Cause I mean, there's like spots and stuff. Like I didn't just open the top and there's still that spot. There's actually that new right there, which I don't know where that's from. I think this is from the, the roll bar. Cause I never did the roll bar uh, thingamajangs. 
But as you can see, I just went through a whole cycle. Absolutely no drips anywhere. The only place where I think it could be dripping is this lock right here because it's the first one I did and I scratched it right at the end where it unscrews, but actually it does seem a little wet. I don't know. I'm gonna put the top back down and we're gonna take a look at it because it's probably wet. We'll see. I'm not sure if you can put the roof down with the door open. Seems a little sticky on those back latches. Again, goodness gracious. That poor back window. Okay, well. Every time it cycles, it seems it does it better. It actually isn't that wet right here. I took this cylinder back out and cleaned it and everything and there isn't any residue in there. Another problem I, oh, wonder if this is residual or if this is new, I don't know. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna wipe it down and see, but yeah, that's that, uh, I did it all. So it is possible to rebuild them yourself. Okay, well that's that. Cylinders are rebuilt. I'm gonna wipe everything down with a new rag and maybe run it one more time. And actually, let's check the fluid level. I'm probably gonna return that because I'll never use it. Yeah, this thing needs to be topped up a little bit it was right in the middle and now it's like a little above low i'm gonna put a little in it all right guys so here we are man this is kind of crazy i was just editing the video and there's no outro we are about i want to say two weeks or more after the rebuild i've left the car um you can't see it but the top still doesn't have its cover covers up there um the trunk still doesn't have any of its it's locked all right so fluid level still about the same as the lines uh, purge and it does more and more, these things like self bleed. So you're gonna have to keep watching the fluid level until it gets to a stable level where it has all the air out of the lines and just has hydraulic fluid in the lines. So if you know, I've ran the top maybe like six full cycles. So up and down like six times, like 12 times moving. So it's been moving a lot and it's really only moved a tiny bit, the level. So, here's the deal. It's really not a good idea to, uh, to run the top over and over. The pump heats up the fluid and you don't want to burn out the pump. The car will actually save itself from running, running itself into oblivion. If it notices it's too hot, It'll just tell you no and it won't do it entirely, which is kind of interesting. But so let's do this uh, one more time. I'm gonna put the top down, show you there's no leaks. Really nice temperature outside today. These are all old residual leaks. Just ran the top once. Absolutely no leaks. Usually leaks out of here or sometimes around here. Nothing on this side. Up here, this was a problem cylinder. Uh, I just noting or 
did say that I had to, I took this cylinder out because it did leak a little bit, took it fully out again, checked the seal, it had some debris in it, like on top of the plastic area, not where the seal is. I cleaned it all up, it's fine. Originally when the top didn't wanna seat the first time is because this wasn't in a position where it could read the metal. I wanna say this is some kind of like electromagnet or something, I have no idea. It's just a sensor that senses when the top hits right here and then tells them to grab it. And it won't go any further until it senses the roof. Now, when putting your car back together or putting this, redoing the seals, do not just like put everything back together and put the everything back in. I drove the car around for like a whole week and I don't care what anyone thinks, like people would pull up next to me. I know they're looking at the roof and like, man, this car is uh, junk. But I mean, I had to make certain. Sometimes re people rebuild this block. I haven't seen any problem with it. I don't even know what it does. My kit didn't come with any seals. Here's another thing. Back in the day, uh, maybe a year or so ago, on my LS430, I contacted a company, Simply Speakers. Just reached out to them, sent them a text, was like, hey, I got this car, I see you don't have a video on it. I'll make a video on it, just send me the kit. Dude was more than happy to send the kit out. I bought this kit first and then contacted the company. It's really weird, when I contacted the company, they were just rude and unkind to me and it was really weird. Like, I made a whole video where I could have talked up the company a whole bunch. Not even going to bring up the name of their company again. Not even give them the time of day. When I reached out to them and was like, hey, if you just refund me the money, I'll talk up your kit and it'll be the best advertisement you ever had for your kit. They responded with, at first, uh, no response. I was like, what the, like, what is wrong with you guys? So, yeah, that kind of, uh, put a damper on making the video because I was like, man, do I redo some of the clips so I don't bring up their kit? But instead I just, uh, I didn't bring up the name of their company, but like one time in the video just to show what seals I bought. I wouldn't buy their kit. There's probably better seals to buy. You can probably find someone better or better company that's nicer and actually has customer service to buy your kit. Cause like, if I'm making a video and I tell them that like, hey, I just rebuilt all my cylinders, I can talk up your company and they're just like rude and unkind. I'm like, wow, like I should have reached out to them first, learned they were rude and unkind and then just bought a different kit. So here we are, top works, doesn't leak. I'm gonna let it sit for a second and I'm put it back up and yeah. All right, here we are tops down still as it cycles more and more there's gonna be less air in the system and it's just gonna work better and better <laughs> I wish I knew why it made that noise but I don't so it's all good That's that, you know, it works. Works really good. All right, so tops back up. We still have absolutely no leaks. As you can see on the other side of the car, no leaks. Back here, no leaks. Check the fluid level again. I'll have to look back in the video, but I don't think the fluid level moved at all. Could have moved a little bit. It's still probably cycling. I'm probably still going to keep all the everything out. Um, if you're doing this yourself and you watch the whole video and you're like, man, this seems like a different language. I don't even understand. One, I'd start the way I did it. I'd start with the top cylinders. There's like one screw, one screw, you lift it up, another screw. Just take out the top plate. And if that seems like too much, taking out these two cylinders and redoing them, I'd probably say don't do it. 
If you're gonna attempt this yourself, I get like a computer, a laptop or something, or your phone, and play the video and do like one cylinder at a time. Maybe like watch the whole video, get a good understanding of what's going on, then have like my video, and maybe if you can find another person's video, have that with you to put the, do, do all the cylinders. Um, now that I did it, it doesn't seem that hard, but that's the whole thing about paying someone to do it is they have a good understanding of what they're doing and you're paying for their experience and for them not to F your car up. So like if you break the, uh, the sensor on the bow extension cylinder, your, your top will never work again until you replace the sensor on it and you probably will never know that's the problem there's just there's just so much going on with this for being coming out in like 1990 this is just whoa you know in my head hydraulic roofs are just way too much but they work so well when they work well but even modern hydraulic roofs they can go bad so thanks for watching guys good luck